This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stoltenberg, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now at Ion Dawn. I'm behind me here's your Xpeng G9. In this video, I'm gonna test the range of it. Unfortunately, it's getting winter, especially tomorrow. It's gonna be freaking snowstorm. But okay, we wanna see how far can we go in winter. Uh, we have now dry roads. I have to do it now because in around three, four hours, it's going to rain. Uh, sorry snow a lot it's gonna be a shit storm coming but yeah so this is the g9 performance it has winter tires on yeah that's good and look voila wait oh yeah so now this is the tricky part i have not charged the car to 425 kilometers and this consumption is just a rolling average you know this is a chinese car but um i figured out that you see, we have the VLTP range, so it's a fixed rate. So once you charge the car to 100%, it will show 520 kilometers always. So we can use this one as a measurement of how many percent we have. Also, uh, previously, uh, we could see how many percent the battery is at, but then it disappeared and then it's supposed to come back. So it's not like I haven't uh, shown it or anything like that. But uh, so, but, but, which means that um, 5.2 kilometer equals to 1%. So uh, also the state of charge scale is not linear. Towards the end it drops faster and on and towards the top uh, the kilometer goes up slow. Yeah, not because it's charging slow, but okay. But so what we're going to do is that we will have to start at least at the same state of charge. Wait, okay, yeah. Uh, we have to start at the same um, 425. We try to start there. And then um, we drive a distance Unfortunately, we cannot drive north now. There is some Bausch still up there. Uh, we're going to drive south to Cleavage and back again. And we measure how many kilometers we spend. And we know the distance. And then we work out the consumption. So, yeah, slightly different method. Uh, you know, when you are testing Chinese cars, you really need to use your brain to try to figure out how this shit works. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh yeah, and to reset since startup, um, yeah, since launch charge it automatically reset when you start. But you have to do it like this. Yeah, I forgot my phone there. Okay, you do this, and then you lock down the car. There is no reset uh, trip or something like that, unlike most other cars. And now we have reset since startup. <laughs> Ah, oh, freaking Chinese cars, man. Oh. Okay, we're on the move. We have LCC activated. <laughs> yeah, there is actually no sound, is it? Yeah, I heard it once on the first day when I activated it, and then the voice went away, so that's good. Yeah, so no LCC deactivated. Uh, but you still get this one and that one, yeah. Okay, so it's minus one degree Celsius outside. It's a bit uh, um, windy, and also they have pre. Oh, oh what the heck? Yeah, it, it slows down in the curve like a Toyota driver. Like it, it's not even sharp, you know. <laughs> this happens. Like I'm cruising at 90 kilometers per hour, and it slows down. This is super annoying. Especially if you go for if you go faster, it will then slow down. So I notice many many times that it slows down a lot like you try to cruise at 120 it slows down to 100 kilometers per hour the record was actually uh it slowed down 30 kilometers per hour oh, what the heck conditions. okay okay one thing you have to do is you go here you go here to vehicle setting and then disable this one yeah driver status monitor hey cabin microphone can you disable uh can we uh... oh I prevented uh, Chinese people to listen to me <laughs> look at the cabin at night nice ambient light hey wait, wait, let me check here what is the X-Pad gonna do now with the merge when I'm driving slow okay it kind of handles it oh the, the lane becomes really wide and then, and then what, what's going to happen at the end? Oh, 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 okay, it did it, yeah. Okay, it seems to do it better now that um, we drive slow. <laughs> at 120 kilometers an hour, it's then to break it. Right, yeah. 
And here we have the X Bank uh, visualization. Hmm, where have I seen this one before? Oh, uh, the car is doing it again. It's driving on autopilot, and I don't have to touch the steering wheel. It's in Elon mode. I, I discovered this before. It randomly happens. Uh, you can drive for several minutes. Uh, I, I'm not joking, man. This is not a, it's not a setup. <laughs> it's not staged. It, it, from time to time, it just happens. Uh, I can drive for maybe 10, 15 minutes before I have to intervene or something. But now that we're just cruising now on the motorway, you go straight, then no hands uh, needed. Uh, this is probably not legal according to EU regulations, but I'm just showing <laughs> This car has some bugs. For example, the ambient light. Yeah, I showed you I Set it to the lowest because otherwise it would be too bright Asian people. They just want way too bright screen way too bright lights um, But every time you start the car It resets and then the ambient light becomes bright again So what you have to do is just push the slider a little bit up and then down again to the lowest that you want then you notice that hey it's suddenly darker the same bug occurred with the mg4 but that was the screen brightness even when i turned down the brightness it would still be kind of bright ish uh, every time i start i just have to up and down yeah chinese cars you know i tested so many chinese cars in the past and uh, i learned how they tend to bug in the same way maybe they copy each other's work but also copy each other's uh, bugs <laughs> yeah and some other bugs but okay but it's um well i can actually feel it yeah it's hard to describe but the the auto steer is not going straight it tends to oscillate a little bit left and right i'm not sure how it is with the forward uh but th this will be worse once you go faster but holy crap man i Elon mode. I like this man. Elon mode. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just was trying to provoke someone to film me. Like, oh, look at that dude. He's film. He's sleeping <laughs> while driving. Okay, I have to take over now because we arrive at Cleavage. <laughs> okay. Result of 90 test. We started with 425 kilometers down to 378. And then the distance was 42.2 kilometers. Now this claim consumption is way too high. So um, I will do the calculations afterwards. So it's minus one degree Celsius. And now we need to charge it back up to 425. We just want to make it consistent. So you see, uh, yeah, I could just uh, drive from here and further down, but then it's, uh, it's not linear. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's plug it in then. Yeah, okay, there's one other variable which is cooling after fast charging, but uh, it shouldn't be that much. Or I, I don't think it's that hot, the battery. So, okay, let me just wild guess. Oh, look at that, we are 73%. Okay, we can see here, uh, yeah, percentage doesn't show here, but at 73%, we're taking 133 kilowatt. <laughs> yeah, this car charges like a boss. And then eventually here you will see a nice charging curve, just like in the G3 also. So, all right, uh, back to 425 then. And in case you're wondering, uh, is preheating off? No, preheating, this is something different. When you click here, you see that it's uh, more like a preconditioning thing. Hey, oh, wait, wait, is the preheat of the battery on now since this symbol is on? Or, what is that button? Oh, I need to test it. Okay, but uh, yeah, here you can schedule when you want to leave and then it will preheat based on that. And then what they think is slow charging session, they uh, settings. Well, this is for AC charging. Uh, some of the stuff here is a little bit uh, weirdly translated and then 12 volt socket. Yeah, you can actually, after you lock down the car, you can keep the 12 volt powered on. This is a pretty cool feature. I wish other car manufacturers would implement something like this. Yeah, you see, you can run it for, for example, if you have a cooler box or I don't know, whatever that uses uh, some 12 volts, so no problem. You have a big ass battery, you know, and then other functions. Yeah, this is one preheat pre or oh, long. Okay, this is the preheating before fast charging. So you have to navigate to, uh, they call it 
fast charging pile. What the heck is a charging pile? <laughs> charging gun. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, well, I have to pay attention. Shit. Okay, okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. All right, all good. And if we look here, which drive mode do you want to use? Oh, do you want to use standard or eco or sport or maybe off road? Wait, don't. Man, those sound effects, they must make the car faster. <laughs> just like, just like fossil cars when they make noise, it makes the car faster, right? <laughs> okay, let's go. I'm going to use uh, standard mode. All right, we're on the move. And uh, um, yeah, this is the problem. I'm trying to cruise 123 now which is 120 GPS speed, but the car slows down like a Toyota driver. Uh, how do I get the uh, accurate test then? Uh, well, what you can do is you can, you can disengage the, the well, actually you, you can't just do it like this. Um, you have to totally disengage this one and then wait for it, wait a couple of seconds, and then only tap down once to activate cruise control. And now it doesn't slow down that much. Uh, weird shit will still happen, but okay. Well, I'm going to show you something here. Okay. Look like this. Okay. It has auto lane change. Huh? Oh, shit. Now, what the heck is that sound? What the? Uh. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, yeah. But it is nice and quiet in here. I you know I tested the sound levels and it is as quiet as EQS SUV, the fat EQS. Think about this, huh? A car that costs half of EQS. Wait, it's doing it again. I'm in Elon mode. <laughs> I think it's because when I when I disengage like this, and then what you have to do, you have to say, Elon Musk is God then you have Elon mode. <laughs> oh, shit. No, 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 no. It slows down so much, man. Yeah, I, I mean, the car is great overall. It's quiet, it's comfortable. But, oh, shit, it's doing the zigzag now and it's doing the slowdown. And then it's, uh, sometimes it slows down and then it speeds up a bit and then it slows down. Oh, man. Freaking Norwegian left lane huggers club is ruining my test. Um, okay, um, uh, I got blocked a lot. Um, yeah, the north route is uh, usually when I where I drive because it's empty. Uh, and then the south route here towards Cleveland is always packed, even in the evening now. It's, I mean, it's almost midnight. What? Um, okay, I just have to go a little bit faster. All right, this time we ended up with 363 kilometers. Yeah, still minus one degrees. Okay, let's crunch on numbers and calculate uh, based on, uh, yeah, it was uh, 94 kilowatt hour net capacity. Because I also couldn't figure out the net capacity on this car. So. <laughs> Look, here we have the regular makeup mirror that you see in most cars. But look on this side. It's bigger and wants to flip down this one. Then this screen here shows up for the passenger uh makeup space what the heck you can change color temperature soft skin natural skin be look, look, look at this shit look at this wait okay there we go yellow ish well i had to go a little down so you can see okay problem is that it's it's overexposed let me try now what the heck you can change you can even you can go to customize here and then you can have Whatever color, okay, look, look. What the heck, man? That is awesome. I never seen any car do it like this before. <laughs> okay, let's check the weight. Front axle. Whoa, really? Huh? Wait, the whole car. Oop. That's not too bad. Wow, impressive. For a quiet car and that comfort. Huh. 
Okay, so based on all the tests now, it, uh, my best guess is that the consumption is only around 201 watt hour per kilometer at the 9 test and then 271 at the high speed test. Uh, so yeah, that is better than e-tron and better than EQS SUV, huh? But okay, um, I'm not 100% sure how good this test is, but it, it is as, as good as I can make it. So yeah, it means that this car, despite not having humongous battery, you know, only 98 kilowatt hour, could almost match the other ones with bigger battery. Yeah. So this is also what other car testers uh, managed to get when they tested this uh, G9 is that uh, it seems to be fairly efficient. Okay, it's not like super efficient. We haven't tested, uh, for example, uh, Tesla Model X Palladium yet. But um, my impression is that efficiency here must be good, yeah. And uh, also it charges like a boss. And then the combined test like I did uh, previously with the 1000 km challenge proves that it is actually a very uh, good uh, actually beating some of the other cars like, you know, EQS. Well, actually, yeah, matching EQS, but beating even the BMW iX. Hmm? Hmm? So uh, yeah, what a car, man, for the money. You get all this stuff, you get the space, you get the comfort, you get the soundproofing, the charging speed, and it costs roughly half for the Germans. Hmm? Hmm? Just go buy it. Yeah. Just uh, remember to not use uh, X-Pilot. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.